But when I said that uh, we'll, we'll continue to uh, work with our elected uh, officials, uh, I meant that. There, there's, there's been a lot of work already done. Uh, Mrs. Powers has gone down and, and uh, testified. Uh, I, I, I've worked with, um, uh, with, with our local representative and uh, trying to do some things um, uh, to uh, minimize uh, the impact how we're uh, being negatively impacted financially from charter schools, but there's a lot of things that are happening to the district that are outside of our control. And those are the things that we are doing, those are the actions that we are taking. The things that we can control, uh, we are doing. Uh, we are extremely uh, conscious uh, of every dollar that we spend. Um, you know, we, we, we make sure that uh, there's justification for it. Uh, at every turn, we want to make sure that resources are making it to the classroom uh, and impacting students uh, in a meaningful way. Uh, we're going to continue to do that uh, with all of the decisions that we make. So regardless uh, of the levy, uh, this is how we do business. Uh, and hence, moving around back to uh, data-driven decisions. Um, we don't make moves without uh, reliable data. Uh, to tell us uh, what the situation is and we're, we're going to continue to do that um, and uh, continue to be fiscally responsible uh, for your tax dollars uh, and make sure that we're maximizing all of the opportunities uh, and our ability to afford a good, a good education to our students. So I want to make sure that I make that clear that that's, that doesn't change the way we behave as a board fiscally. Talking about the elimination of tangible personal property. Um, this has been discussed in multiple work sessions, um, boards again before us, as well as the Finance Committee. And I would like to just remind the electorate that the tangible personal property is a permanent elimination. Um, exhaustive efforts have been gone through to our legislators to no avail. Uh, some of the legislators have even picked up the, uh, uh, the torch to no avail. Lobbying, letters to our representatives. You know, this, is, this has been going on for many, many years and actually was the trigger as a reminder to the operational change plan, um, you know, when of the nine million that is slated to be eliminated, 3.2, correct me, was, was eliminated. That was a big plan. There was a lot of work that went into operational change plan binders like this, and this amount is twice that. So again, this is a permanent elimination. We've been talking about it, um, and we'll continue to talk about it, and by some Miracle of the repealed, I don't know, but tangible personal property for all practical purposes is going away. The cat tax was supposed to replace it, it replaced it, but the money never flowed back to city governments and schools. And hence why we're talking about replacing a permanent loss with a new operating loan. And you'll recall Board of Education when uh, Mrs. Severinsky from Triad was reporting back to you. She was very complimentary to you as the Board of Education and to our school district about the results of this survey. And she was pleasantly surprised, I think, when relative when she compares the results of our survey against other communities who do similar surveys, that the uh, feeling about the support of the school district is, is very, very, very strong. So that's a feather in your cap and a feather in the cap of the residents of our community. Um, second uh, key finding here, a majority of the phone survey participants say they would support an additional 6.9 mil levy for the schools, but um, here's the caveat, a strong informative campaign will be needed to pass that issue. The third finding is uh, that the voters responded favorably to several arguments in favor of the levy, and those uh, two arguments are that uh, maintaining high quality schools is critical to keeping our property values high and keeping our community a desirable place to live. And uh, this levy is needed so our children are well prepared for college and careers in the changing workforce. 